Welcome to the Doomsday Report. Now, I'm being joined this week by a band that's been held by Kerrang! magazine as Hair Windmilling, Neck Snapping, Thrash Nirvana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Kalanova. Hiya! Hi. Hello! Now, how's it going, guys? You come up from Newcastle, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you're on a new tour with Ash and Reach, Nocturne Wolf, and. A ritual Spirit. Yeah. And a ritual Spirit. Yeah, That's yeah. right, now, how did that tour come about? Well, it's really a continuation of last year. We went out with a Ritual Spirit and Ash and Reach. A bit of a mini tour again we played. Was it Dumfries? We played Edinburgh, Newcastle. Uh, that was it, wasn't it? Just yeah, just yeah. the three of them. Mm-hmm. And then it was just, it went so well, I decided just best to do it again. Mm-hmm. And we brought Noctin Wolf in this time, so we've got the Glasgow and then we're heading down to Liverpool with Ash and Reach. That's awesome. Now, you guys have been around since was it 2017, 2018? 2018. 2018. 2018. 2018. 2018. We debuted 2017. Johnny and I started making loud. M- making loud. I like <laughs> the way that sounds. Um, now, did you all know each other beforehand, or was it through music that you got to know each other? Uh, Johnny and I knew each other before we started this band. We went to the same university at the same time, but like, we didn't hang out a lot at uni. We just sort of ended up in all the same bars and clubs and stuff. Yeah. And eventually, we ended up screaming "Hail to the King" by Evan Sunfall into each other's faces and decided to form a band in a nightclub. Yeah, that's and then, like that. yeah, we, we met these two after we'd written a few demos and started like sending them out to find so people to work with. So it was you two that started the band. Yeah, and then and then I came next. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was trying to find a brand new, a brand new band at the time and uh, I just kind of came across these guys and I was like, yeah, this sounds pretty sweet. Nice one, and you yeah, the well. final one to... I, uh, yeah, so I moved up for university um, and I just left um, an old band and I was like, oh, you know, gonna have a bit of a chill, just started a new uni, new city. Um, and then I joined the Rock Society page on, right. um, online and I saw Joe put a post up because he used to be the president for Newcastle um, and I was like, oh, give it a go. And uh, yeah, it's kind of been history since then. So where are you originally from then? Me, I'm from the New Forest, so like Southampton, Bournemouth. Well, right, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, south. Yeah, exactly. south. Uh, south. That's farther south than me. <laughs> <laughs> now, what sort of things do you like to play? You know, how do you like to get your sound out there? You know, who's your influences? I think if you go down the band, it's completely different. Yeah, yeah. we're all different. Yeah, so yeah we're always kind of like pulling each other out of each other's um, comfort zones and stuff, which is cool. So I come from like a kind of like I'm wearing a Gojira hoodie, which is the yeah. way like I come from quite a like proggy, you know, master on Gojira carnival kind of space. But then I'm more kind of like metalcore in a sense, so I'm really into like in this moment, motionless and white, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm straight up thrash. So it's Metallica, Exodus, Testament, you know, big four, everything like that. Nice. I'm more. Uh, Trivia, like I guess, Avenged Sevenfold and stuff like that. Kind of. Right now, what I'd like to know is about some of your gigs that you've done over the last year or two. You know, what's been the most momentum? What's the ones that have stuck out the most? Actually, Lost Society. So the Finnish thrash band Lost Society came through Newcastle and invited us to support them, which was wicked in and of itself because it was the Riverside, which is a great venue in Newcastle that we'd not played before. Yeah. So that went great. Lost Society were absolutely amazing. We didn't find out until after the end of our set that Jeff Waters of Annihilator had been in the crowd the whole time. <laughs> yeah. no, no, we, yeah, we, we go back, apparently he lives in Durham. Who knew? Who knew? So, yeah, we, go, we go back and sit down by the merch and we're like, Hold on. Oh, Mark, we just played to, we've just played to Annihilator. Hold on, sure. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's probably good we didn't know beforehand or I freaked yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. I've just gone. Cool. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, we also got to play the O2 um, in Newcastle with Fallen Mafia for their album launch, which was really good. That was, like, good. It was a good show. Uh, like the sound quality was awesome, and like um, it was great turnout. It well. was a good turnout. Yeah, exactly. it was a good show. I think to be honest, some of my favourite shows were the ones behind closed doors. Almost it was with Ellen being a university student. She's got to do certain performances through the air. Right. When you've got university professors making up his drum kit. Honestly, the sound, it was amazing. This is in the graduation hall as well at Newcastle, so it's a big kind of like classical... High ceiling. High ceiling. Oil paintings on the walls. It was pretty much. It was insane. So the acoustics would have been good then. Yeah, Yeah, we sounded drunk. We sounded massive. I think what had me on the edge was we were standing playing straight to hell in the, in the place Martin Luther King gave a speech. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was a weird one. And then obviously... No one walked out, though. No. 
And then obviously Bloodstock was massive. Yeah, that's what oh, I want yeah. um, to talk to you about was Bloodstock. You know, how did that feel? So... <laughs> that was <laughs> insane. Insane. Yeah, completely insane. So Bloodstock uh, was actually our sixth show as a band, um, which was insane. So we literally went from being no one in the metal to the masses to then playing the new Blood stage at Bloodstock and we were like, what the hell is going on? Um, yeah, that's amazing. So Bloodstock's such a well, it's such an important festival for yeah. like the the smaller metal bands for the metal community because when you see the bigger festivals such as Download, Leeds, you know, it's just the big names. Yeah. You know, just to draw a crowd. Whereas Bloodstock's more about, you know, grassroots metal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, another thing I'd like to talk to you guys about is your EP or well, your EP. Is it um, Omnicide? Omnicide. Is that, uh, yeah, yeah. Is that, uh, yeah. I'm glad I got that right. Um, now, how's that been received wherever you've played? Remarkably well. <laughs> <laughs> I've been impressed yeah. by how well people seem to enjoy it. it it's mad because we keep saying, you know, we remember writing these riffs and it'll be the bedroom in your old yeah, my old apartment, flat. you know, we're sitting and writing these riffs. We never thought people would receive it so well. We've got this Spotify rundown in the years and it's been played in 48 countries around the world. Yeah, really? yeah. just it's bizarre. Bizarre. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, We've had a fan get the part of the album art tattooed on his leg. Yeah! <laughs> Which is insane! Our fans go hard. No, yeah, apparently, killing up fans are hardcore. It happens. Wow, oh, I'm actually really, really impressed by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've not seen that on this yet. You know, but wow. So, what are your plans going forward? So, we've got um, a video dropping tomorrow. 13th, uh, uh, Friday the 13th, yeah. which is for our new single, Immortal. Uh, yeah. Which we're really, really looking forward to. Worked really hard on it. So. Yeah, first music video, and it's a new standalone single, so it, it's like what comes next after On the Side. Right. And then we're, um, we're excited. We've got some deadlines, we've got some things that we want to work towards, and then hopefully, second EP, end of the year, is our plan. Yeah, that's what we're aiming for. That's what we're aiming for. No, nothing set in stone. <laughs> right. um, what difficulties have you had when recording the EP and the filming of the video? To be honest, very little. It, yeah. it went remarkably smoothly. Not it entirely was, for the EP. Touch wood. I had to go back in and re-record the entire album because oh, so it turned oh. out the intonation was out of my bass. I got to the end of the whole yeah. like tracking and we were listening back to the mixes like that's it's out. It doesn't. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. So I had, to, I had to go and get my go and get my bass set up, get the intonation done all properly, and then go back into the studio and completely re-record. I suppose it was a track that I recorded, Hangman, and then. Um, the guy who was in charge uh, basically said, oh, um, I don't know, I don't know where it is, so you'd have to record it again. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll have to it back. yeah we had some yeah. corrupted data or something, yeah. like, oh, just destroyed all of Steve's takes. And then Blood in the Water was the last song on the EP to be recorded, and we were like, oh my god, it's finally done. Went in to listen to it, and I sat on the chair, and I looked at it, listened to it, turned around and was like, no. <laughs> no, don't like it. it. So I had to go back in and re-record all the vocals. I recently found a recording on my phone, a small teaser we did, and it had the original vocals of Blood in the Water. Oh no. That's a good choice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so was it a long process then doing the, well, the recording of the EP? The EP was longer than it should have been. Yeah, we did it in kind of fits and starts. We should really just blocked out some time. So, okay, on this day we do all the drums, on this day we do all the guitar and bass. It was difficult though, because we did record it at the university, so there was limited space yeah. in terms of like booking. There was also um, limited time, because I was in first or second year? One of the two. Second? Second year. I was, I was at some point of university, and obviously getting <laughs> exam ready for period. exam period, so... Mm -hmm. You know, that didn't help. Yeah, it all dragged out a bit. Yeah, we all worked different hours as well, which didn't help, so it was a case yeah. of when you can only book the room for a four hour slot. So yeah, four hours that's at a time. That's not a lot of time to kind of play with, really. You're lucky to get one trapped in in that time. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, for the video, I think I've never been as cold as that video shoot. Oh my oh, god! Yeah. <laughs> I still feel cold off that. <laughs> it was like five weeks ago. Credit to Dead Real Films, it, they were very, very good at what they do. Really yeah, they, really they, they, they had all the facilities ready for us. I mean, yeah, it was a cold room, but to be honest, that adds to the video. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. It, it, do, it did add to the ambience. They were, they're quite perfectionist as well. Like, that one shot in the video took three hours to record. But, yeah. it looks nice. <laughs> it's it's going to be a good video when it drops Yeah, in. yeah, we're really, really strange <laughs> with how it came out, which is good, because for a while, Steve and I were stood on a freezing cold roof in Sunderland, holding a light out on a <laughs> boom, trying to get a shot for hours and hours and hours, trying to synchronise the timing and get everything right. 
to be fair, that was a lot of work. You, you can't knock the whole spirit of it's either right or it's wrong. Oh yeah, no, it had to be right. That's it. There's no it had to be perfect. Yeah. The last well, thing you want is me peering into shop by accident. At least you guys had coats on. I didn't. I was sitting there in my studded bra and my harness, and I was like, <laughs> I'm really cold. It's like January. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm southern. <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh, now, um, what gigs have you got planned for the uh, well, rest of the year so far? Oh god, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So there's this four date run, so uh, yeah, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Newcastle, Liverpool. We've then got another date in Newcastle as part of a charity all day for the Sophia Lancaster Foundation, the Rockstock Festival in the Newcastle University uh, Union venue, that should be cool. Uh, What's after that? What is after that? Wild Worlds? The yes. Wild World Finals. Yes. Trailblazer. In, Col in Colorado. Yeah, the yeah. Call of the Wild Festival have a similar competition to the Mets of the Masters that we came through. Yeah. And we're, the, the final of that in Carlisle is in April. April 30th? No, no, April 7th. No. Something like that. Yeah. So busy, busy then? Yeah. yeah. We've got a book from, uh, we're booked up until December, I think. Oh. Yeah, we've got shows booked for December and stuff already, so it's, mm. it's filling up. Yeah. Ryan, is this your first time in Glasgow? It is, it is. yeah. yeah. So will you be coming back? Yes. See how this yes. one goes. <laughs> Depending on the coronavirus goes. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 We were everybody's so sick of talking about that. I know. We were, we were so worried because we got, Johnny came in this morning um, basically being like, so the government are putting out an announcement, tour might get cancelled, and we were like, what? <laughs> yeah, that would suck. Yeah. Uh, that would seriously suck. But it's, it's the amount of work that goes up behind the doors, people probably have no idea about, you know, even just all the time it takes to travel up here, all the feasibility of getting the hotels booked. Yeah. Things yeah. that will get refunded. Things you can't cancel. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. I hope it's going well. <laughs> That'll be fine for us. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll be good, it'll be good. We'll keep playing even if there's no one here. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Now, well, thank you for taking the time out to speak to me. It, oh, it's, it's been interesting for me because usually I'm sitting there. Oh. Uh, it's, oh, it's, it's got a different like... angle this time, you know, a different feel. I think I've only sat, sat over here once before. You know what I mean? So, but all right, anyway, it's been great chatting to you guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. I've been Esteban, this has been Kalanova, and this has been the Doomsday Report. Keep it metal. Yeah.